let's construct our next major building block for describing how things move in the world. And that is position. Position is a simple idea, but there's a couple things to really think about. It's the location of an object with respect to a chosen coordinate system at some instant in time. So it's where an object is located. If we could like freeze time for an instant and say, hey, that's where it is in some coordinate system. And you can see here, the simplest type of coordinate system is just what's called the one dimensional coordinate system. It's a number line with equally spaced little lines here. I've done mine in meters and you can see I've defined what's called a zero a location arbitrarily defined as this is where zero meters e exists uh, for the position. And then we could go to the right and we would be increasing one, two, three, four meters, or we could go to the left and we label those mathematically uh, with negative numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So hopefully this type of number line is maybe familiar to you from a math class. All right, now we need to be really clear about what is the object in order to talk about where it's located. So I have a person, maybe this is a planet or a sphere, and here's a hammer. And these are co more complex objects than a single uh, point. And what we're going to do is idealize all objects in physics as what are called point particles. So for example, like a hammer has a lot of its mass up here at the head of the hammer, and then the handle is pretty light. And so, well, where is the hammer if you were to put it on a number line? Well, you have to specify a, a certain spot on the hammer a point called a point particle that would then represent the location of that object. Likewise for a person or for any object. Okay, so that's what a point particle is. Now an important thing to note here is that when we're talking about points and point particles, those have zero lengths by definition. Okay, so a point or points have zero length. Now I know when we draw them it won't look like that because you can't do that physically. Um, but we'll take it for granted that points don't have any physical distance associated with them. So what I've done now is I've just drawn a car at two locations. I've said, hey, look, there's this car. It's moving to the right. I'm showing that kind of with these arrows right here. Driving at some speed to the right. And we look down at the clock at some instant in time, and we notice, oh, our clock reads three seconds initially for whatever reason. Uh, maybe somebody started the clock or somebody started the clock three seconds in the past and now we see this car and then a little bit later in time we look down at our clock again and it reads six seconds and the car's moved so where is the car located what's the position of the clock initially and what's the position sorry <laughs> what's the position of the car initially and what's the position of the car finally after um, some time has elapsed well where's the car what is the car right so let's idealize the car as a point particle and I'll do that here uh, by coming along and just drawing a little point anywhere on the car. I think I'll pick right here what I'm calling the front of the car. Okay, so for me, that is the car. And I'm doing that because it's moving to the right and I want it to just be lined up with the number one here when I start for whatever reason. Okay, so um, how would we then write down what's called the position of the car at these two moments in time? Well, we needed a variable, so we'll invent that. So the symbol that will represent um, position will be x. That's typically done for one dimensional motion. And then the unit is the meter. So meter or just lowercase m for short. All right, so how would we write this? Well, we would come along and we'd say that this has an initial position of one meter. And then it has a final position of four meters. Now let's say the car continues to move in some arbitrary way. Maybe it turns around and it decides to go back the other way. And I'm not watching the car at all while it's kind of moving, say, in this region. But for whatever reason, I look up and then I notice, oh, look at my clock now. Look at my watch. It says uh, 20 seconds. And right at that instant in time, I notice that this car is here on the number line. Its point uh, particle is located right at negative three meters. So I can come along and write a new position, negative three meters. And that negative sign has an important distinction. It means we're obviously to the left of our 
arbitrarily chosen zero point here. So you will see how positive and negative signs have an important meaning about um, where objects are located and also what direction that they're moving in, and we'll build that up as time goes by. Um, but for now, to take a look here and maybe pause the video and see if you can figure out something that's a little bit unclear about all of these values, okay? I've deliberately uh, done something here, uh, and I want to see if you can figure it out. So pause the video, and what have I forgot to do for all of these uh, values that I've written down? Go ahead, try this. Well, if you look at it, I'm not being very specific. I'm using obviously the same variable t and x for the clock readings and position. That makes sense, but I need to be specific with subscripts so we can distinguish all of these. That's very important in physics. So what I'm going to do is I'll come along and I'll call this moment one, and I usually do moments um, with uh, numbers and then circles around them. Uh, over here is moment two, um, and then over here is moment three. So in terms of like the past and the future, etc., right, we started here in time at moment one, and then time went by, and then we got to moment two, and then we turned around, and more time went by, and we came all the way over here to moment three. Uh, sometimes we use these um, one, two, and three, these, these numbers for moments, instead of initial and final for our subscripts when we have multi, uh, more than two points uh, to kind of deal with. So we'll do that here, and I'll come along and now put some appropriate subscripts on everything. So this would be uh, clock reading one, position one, clock reading two, position two, clock reading uh, three, and position three. And those numbers one, two, and three of the subscripts, they don't have anything to do with the particular value for the number of meters or the number of seconds on a clock reading. Uh, they're just arbitrarily chosen uh, moments. I could have used A, B, and C or any other numbers uh, that I wanted to for that. Now every time we invent a new quantity in physics, we have to talk about uh, one more idea. So here when we outlined positioned, uh, we came up with the symbol X for it, and then it's of course measured in meters. But we also have to discuss uh, what is the type of this variable? Is it a scalar or a vector? And it turns out position is a vector. And what a vector is in physics is it's a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. And we're going to learn a lot more about this in future videos, but just a quick version here today is that um, things that have both magnitude and direction, well, it's going to matter uh, which way those things are pointing, up, down, left, right, etc. I'll give you an example in the context of position here in just a second. Uh, and then also these quantities that are vectors have what's called magnitude. Now that's in contrast to scalars which just have magnitude. And to give you a sense of what this word magnitude means, well it's, it's synonymous with size. And for example you might have something like a time interval of 30 seconds. That's an example of a scalar quantity. 30 seconds has nothing to do with physical direction. It's not 30 seconds up, down, left, right, north, south, east, west. It's just 30 seconds. It has a certain size to it. Uh, you could come along and do another time interval, maybe something like 20,000 seconds, and that would be an example of a scalar quantity, time interval, that has a much larger magnitude or a much larger size, 20,000 seconds versus 30 seconds. So in the same way, uh, vectors will have magnitude as well. Uh, they'll have a certain size to them, but they will also include direction, and we'll see how to do that. So let's wrap this video up here by teaching you how to draw what's called the position vector in one dimension. All right, so doing this is pretty straightforward. Step one, draw a coordinate system. So I've got two of them drawn here because we're going to do two of these. Uh, but here's a coordinate system in one dimension. We have a positive direction and a negative direction. So that's step one. Step two, draw the particle or the object at some uh, particular position. In this case, I'm drawing the object as a point like we've seen. And this is at a position of x is equal to 4 meters. And then all you have to do is draw an arrow. And you start always at x is equal to 0 at the origin, and you draw a straight line over, which, and then we'll connect it with an arrow here, showing the direction from 0 to the location uh, of the point, and that's it. Now we have this object 
that's called a vector as represented by an arrow and it gives us this visual way to describe the position of the object. Now you might be wondering what's useful about that and we'll see in due time why these things are useful. For today I just want you to learn how to just draw these things in a pretty procedural way and we'll build up how to use them and why they're significant later. Um, so uh, likewise over here uh, why don't you pause the video and make sure you can draw your own position vector uh, yourself and do it for this one over here. Go ahead, try that. All right, so pretty easy, just an arrow point to the left. Now kind of compare and contrast these. Uh, what's, what's different about them and what's the same about them? Well, uh, what's the same is they both start at zero and they both end at the point. Uh, at the particular uh, position here. But what's different is that both of these are pointing in opposite directions and they have different magnitudes. So let's just kind of indicate that here. Uh, we'll say that this first one, or the one on the left over here that you just drew, has a magnitude or a size of three meters. Notice we don't have to put the minus sign there because we're just talking about the length of this arrow. So you could literally come along and measure the length of that. I'll draw that over here as well. And if you measure the length of that in meters, well, it would have a length of three. So that's the magnitude. Uh, likewise, the one over here has a magnitude of four, four meters, and then the direction. So there's a couple ways to state the direction. Uh, one way you could say would just be to the left, which makes sense here. Another way uh, would be uh, saying um, with just a minus sign, um, or if you wanted to be more specific, you could say something like um, in the negative x direction. And then over here, same thing. Uh, this is pointing to the right or the positive direction, or you could say in the uh, positive x direction. All right, now when we work with these vector quantities in equations, when we ultimately use, uh, or when we're plugging into equations, we'll need to build up uh, some rules for how to keep everything straight with direction. We'll, we'll do that at a later time. Um, for now, I just want to give you this intuition on how to draw these things. And then finally, to connect the whole story for representing the position vector, not only as an arrow, but then using the proper symbols. Uh, here's how we do that. Uh, we would state this one on the left well we'd have a position and the symbol we use is x but because it's a vector quantity because it has a direction associated with it we have to have some way to distinguish that in physics because some quantities don't have direction like time and mass while other quantities do have direction like position and a lot of other quantities that we'll see so to denote quantities that are vectors that have this directionality associated with them we put this half arrow and that just says that it's a vector quantity it's just a, a reminder, and that's important uh, when writing out notation. Now, sometimes we'll relax that uh, when we're writing out our physics equations because it can be cumbersome when you're first learning physics. Uh, but I'll write it now just to be technically correct. Uh, and then we'd write negative 3 meters. So we have the position being stated in a simple way with the magnitude of 3. We got the right units for meters. And then we're also indicating the direction here uh, with something that makes sense in math. This is not a word here. We're using an actual symbol or sorry, something that would that could be used mathematically um, for the direction. And we'll do it over here as well. So the position vector for this one is, and I'll be really explicit by putting a plus sign here. You don't have to, but I'll just do it here. Um, positive four meters. And there we have it. So here's our vector, our two vectors that represent two uh, positions here in one dimensional space. One final note in terms of writing out the magnitude properly, um, how would you do that? Uh, well, we use another notation for that, and you put absolute value bars. So for example, uh, let's write that here. So the magnitude of the vector over here on the left, we put absolute value bars. So this is saying, look, we got some position vector right here. So here's position, that's x. This half arrow means vector, it's a vector. Okay, so we have some vector called position, and let's write down the magnitude, this, just the size. Exclude the direction, we don't care about it, just tell me how long that arrow is essentially, okay? So th that's some notation for that. And you just write three meters. Likewise over here, the magnitude of this position vector is four meters. 
So you can see a, a notational difference in how we write the full quantity, like the vector, the position vector. We have to have a direction. Here's that minus sign. And then the magnitude here. Same over here. Full vector, direction, magnitude, versus just reporting out the magnitude, uh, where we use this absolute, val absolute value bar um, notation. All right, so just wanted to be technically correct with everything here today for our first introduction to how we represent vectors, how we draw them, etc. We'll be doing a lot more with vectors and learning about some mathematical operations about them uh, very soon. All right, so take care. See you in the next video.